what better place to give a sneak peek of the worldwide sneak peek of the next version of Final Cut Pro to an audience. To an audience of 1,700 Final Cut Pro users. We're really excited about what we have to show today. We think that when you see it, you're going to be as excited as we are because we think we have something which is as revolutionary as the first version of Final Cut Pro when it was introduced back in 1999. Now, if you remember, that version of Final Cut Pro was revolutionary in a number of different ways, not least of which it was $49,000 cheaper than its nearest competitor. It also happened to be the very first piece of software to deal exclusively with non-linear editing in software. So you didn't need all of that extra hardware paraphernalia to get your content in and out. And finally, it was also the very first ever NLE to work with then the emerging format of the day, the digital format of the day, DV. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, a few people still shooting on DV. Cast your mind back because you'll recall that this happened to be state of the art at the time. And it was state of the art because it had a Firewire port on it. And you could connect it to the Firewire port on your Power Mac G3. <laughs> Running Final Cut Pro, and that's all you needed Final Cut Pro, Power Mac G3, and one of these cameras. So now let's fast forward to where we are today 2011 and the current version of Final Cut Studio. Now, quite a lot has changed in that time. We've had an entire ecosystem which is built up around Final Cut Studio. We've had uh, manufacturers, camera manufacturers, camera manufacturers as venerable as Ari, build cameras specifically to encode into ProRes and capture QuickTime files with a specific purpose of working with Final Cut Pro. Now this has meant that we now move Final Cut Pro into more markets and more market segments than ever before. So now we have every major broadcaster on the planet relying on Final Cut Pro for um, mission critical content delivery day in and day out. Now, of course, it comes as no surprise, of course, that it will be uh, Final Cut Pro finds itself incredibly popular in also the independent film community. The power and performance, yes, exactly. The power and performance of Final Cut Pro um, and the affordability, the fact that you can walk into an Apple store in any main street in virtually any city in the world and be, pick up everything you need to give life to the vision and the, of the documentary that you have in your head is really incredible. <laughs> At the other end of the spectrum, of course, we have the feature film editors. Now, these are a couple of the films that were edited on Final Cut Pro that were nominated for an Academy Award this year. These are not the only ones. In fact, we had the entire documentary film category was all edited on Final Cut Pro. But the reason why I wanted to highlight these is because, just like you guys, these are filmmakers that are coming back to Final Cut time after time. The Cohen brothers and David Fincher have edited multiple feature films using Final Cut Pro. So, the bottom line here is that no matter which market segment you belong to, broadcast, independent film, or feature film, People love Final Cut Pro. We have a 94% customer satisfaction ratio. That's absolutely incredible. People absolutely love working with Final Cut Pro. And that means that we've steadily built our community up over the last few years. Um, we've now crossed, in the end of last year, over 2 million Final Cut Pro users. Now, what's significant about that is not just the number, but frankly, the angle on the top of the graph here. What we're doing is we're growing that base faster than ever before. So I'm going to share with you a statistic which my competition probably wouldn't be too happy about. But we're growing faster than the nonlinear editing marketplace. We're growing, let's be specific, more than twice as fast as the nonlinear editing marketplace. So what does this mean in terms of where Final Cut sits with its competition? Well, again, according to independent research, when the highest end of our marketplace, the broadcast and post-professional, is choosing a non-linear editor, they are overwhelmingly selecting Final Cut Pro. 
So, where does that leave Adobe and Abbott? Well, they'd like you to believe that they're competing with us. The truth is, they're in a race for second place. It's not the reason which we get up in the morning. What we want to do is we want to create great software. We're all about creating an incredible user experience and great software that you guys can use. So the next question is, of course, what's next? I'm sure that's really why you're all here. And so now we're going to start unveiling a sneak peek of the next version of Final Cut Pro. And to help me with that task, I'm going to invite onto the stage Pete Steiner, who is the architect of the new version of Final Cut. I am so incredibly excited to be here to talk to you about what we've been up to lately. There's been a lot of talk around about what that might mean, ranging from nothing at all to just a little incremental update to the existing application to a whole bunch of other interesting rumors about what we've been up to. But I get to be one of the people that shows you exactly what it is we've been up to, which is building a brand new version of Final Cut Pro. This is a rebuilt application built from the ground up, re-architected based on modern technologies and ba based on leveraging all of the experience we've had building the existing Final Cut since its inception in 1999. So when you're building a new application, what do you do? Where do you dive in? The first thing you need to do is make sure that you built an application that's built on modern foundations. We wanted to make sure that we built, a, that we built an application that can carry us as far into the future as the existing platform has carried us up until today. And hopefully even further than that. And the first and most important piece of building a modern, modern application on modern foundations in today's industry is building a 64-bit application. strong by the four gigabytes of memory that are available to 32-bit applications and now can take full advantage of as much memory as you can throw at the application. What this, mean, what this means in practical terms is larger, more complex projects, larger formats, more frames in memory, deeper and richer effect stats. Basically all of the things that are ridiculously memory intensive now have full run of all of the memory you can throw at the problem. <laughs> Linear light based rendering system. What? That too. 
So what that practically means, though, is not only can you trust that the pixels transfer all the way through the playback and rendering system, but when you're doing effects work and anything like that, we're able to deliver the highest quality possible on the platform. We're also introducing a resolution-independent playback system that allows you to mix formats <laughs> ranging from traditional SD formats all the way up to today's mobile and HD formats and ranging all the way up to 2 and 4K formats. So you can create content from a variety of different sources and lay it back to a variety of different sources without having to worry about the origin of the media that you, you're working with. So, but both of those things are incredibly processor intensive. They take a lot of resources. To be able to deliver that, we're leveraging some of the best of Mac OS X. We're leveraging Grand Central Dispatch. This allows us to take advantage of all of the cores on your machine, the GPU that you've got installed in your machine, to, to scale from your MacBooks all the way up to the highest end machines and render your, your work as quickly as is possible. What this means in practical terms is this dialogue that you love, it's gone. Thank you. 